Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming. My name is Hollow. I'm just hiding behind the shield. And it's finally time to talk about this nightmarish build. The fingerprint shield. Somehow, despite all the patches addressing the many metas of Elden Ring, this simple shield remains super effective. It's true that, yeah, madness procs aren't as crazy as they once were, stunning for a lot shorter of a period, but bleed remains outrageous, and honestly, that little madness stun is still more than enough in PvP, leading to a guaranteed hit and a big burst of damage when it happens. It even still procs during a roll at times, which is just silly, leading to a free hit. It's not just effective in PvP as this shield, though. It's obviously effective in PvE. Boss is, of course, going to blindly attack you and with that you can trade incredibly well for big bursts of bleed damage block hits and even guard counters which is really fun to use you're able to get a surprising amount of quick hits in which leads to even more damage it's a strong build, one that stood the test of time, the test of the Elden Ring patches. Somehow though, I've never tried it until today, so it's finally time to do that. Let's begin with PvP. As it is a weapon with both bleed and madness, this is a huge threat of a weapon should you be hit by it. The bleed burst is obviously going to be great, but it's really the madness buildup that's the really scary factor. If it goes off, it can lead to an easy win. When it procs, that person's going to be held in place in a stunned animation, which leads to one free attack. You could send out the ash of war we've got in place or a nice heavy attack or a running attack and it'll often result in a kill you just have to react fast enough the core of this build though is that you are a trading machine i'm wearing very heavy armor i have a big heavy shield and i've got a lot of poison defense to do so you can trade with the basics you can trade with heavies running attacks the ash of war whatever as it is a heavy shield it's great for blocking we can run around full sprinting blocking and cause panic in them causing them to roll many times and then punish them with a basic ash of war running attack the basic attack does great damage. An easy 400 plus on just a light attack isn't something you could ignore, especially when it's causing bleed and madness each time. The running attack, as I mentioned, is insanely good. Great for roll catching or just applying pressure. Even if they do roll it, but you still connect with them, the bleed buildup will continue and the madness buildup as well. It's almost like the running attacks are the basis of the build and PvP. That leads into everything else, like the bleed, like the madness. However, it is the Ash of War, Shield Crash, that is the biggest hitter of the build, but not something you should be throwing out randomly. It does leave you vulnerable should you miss it, so it's a great idea to use this in combination with other stuff. You can try to roll catch with it, clipping a bit of damage, which is great, but best used in trading or after a stun from maybe a madness proc. Trading with someone who's overzealous who shouldn't really be trading with it. If someone's trying to cast a spell or an incantation in front of you, you can just throw it at them and usually you'll come out on top. The Shield Crash full combo can deal up to 1,300 or 1,400 damage in PvP if it fully lands, that's going to kill a lot of people. We can make it all even more threatening with the simple use of the incantation Swarm of Flies, which is also bleed build up, but it's not really there for that. It's just to pressure them. You send it out, it moves slowly towards them, you run at them from a different angle, and then do a combination attack where they have to choose which poison they're going to take. Of course, you want them to take yours because you do more damage and all the statuses, but the flies do a nice amount of damage, and yeah, they'll lead to a bleed proc even faster. If that happens, you get stronger thanks to White Mask and the Talisman. Honestly, overall, this is a very effective PvP build to this day. I've been very impressed with it. And apparently, I'm not the only one. It's been a long time since I've loaded into a duel, and the guy takes one look at me and just leaves. He thinks better of it. But I actually had it happen twice in one session, which is unheard of for me. It's not like it's a build you can't beat. It's just a 100% you win when you use it. It's just very strong if you know how to use it. You are left vulnerable after some of your slower attacks, or like I said, when you miss the Ash of War. In PvE though, it's a different story. It's kind of dumb, it's kind of funny. You can just walk up blocking and then land, say, a running attack in those smaller punish windows and then full on Ash of War in a proper punish window or even combo that for a massive burst or just screw it, you know, just trade with it. The damage is very impressive for a shield. The base hits deal solid damage, and then you get that huge bleed burst, and that makes you even stronger when it happens. In the situation where you can land many attacks quickly using the Ash of War spam, your AR is going to shoot up, thanks to the bleed proc, and thanks to the consistent hits. What I love about this build and playing this is the fact that we can guard counter and it be legitimate. Something I've done way too little of in Elden Ring. Guard counters were made even faster in patch 1.06, which was awesome to see, but it feels rather underused. Guard counters, amazingly, with this heavy build, they can stagger bosses, so landing those counters wherever you can is actually fantastic. Either way, our ideal situation in PvE is to land multiple shield crash combos using blocks and running attacks, and maybe some guard 
counters around it. It's very fun to play, as silly as the whole thing is, and very effective wherever bleed is relevant. All right, let's go over the build with the shield that I'm holding upside down for some reason. There is a bit to cover here, so let's just begin. Now, obviously, we are using the fingerprint stone shield, but what's really important here is that it's in the bleed mode. We're able to apply bleed to it using the Ash of War, the all-important Ash of War that we are using. That is shield crash. So with that, we have a shield that's doing some nice damage as well as causing bloodlust buildup and also that madness buildup. Then we have the Dragon Communion Seal as our seal of choice, since we are using some arcane here. We're wearing the three-piece of Bull Goat for the nice, heavy, resistant armor set with the white mask as the helmet. As always, this is because every time a blood loss occurs, it's going to increase our attack power. And of course, we're also running Lord of Blood's Exaltation, much the same as white mask, extra damage when we see a bleed. Then we have Erdtree's Favor plus two for some extra health and stamina. And yeah, a little bit of equip load, but it's actually not that important. Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, that's going to give us some physical damage negation, a small amount in PvP, but a lot in PvE. Since we are going for trading, this is really important. And then we have Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, increasing our attack power when we get successive attacks. You might not think that we're attacking that quickly with this build, but actually you get a lot of hits out with the Ash of War specifically. Each hit that you land is an extra 3% attack power, and obviously that goes up a lot when you get off one Ash of War combo or multiple. So why not increase our damage? Which is what we're doing with the Wondrous Physic as well, with the Thorny Crack tier for the same thing. Very important though, we also have the Winged Crystal tier. That's because the armor set and the big shield, they're so heavy that obviously we can't really move around that fast. Whereas when we pop that Wondrous Physic, that gives is a massive weight limit increase so now we're able to run around like crazy it brings us all the way to a medium load from nothing if worse comes to worse though when you know moving around the world i can just take off my chest and of course the gloves and then i'm able to run around at full speed and fight like normal when doing open world content but three minutes of not needing to worry about your weight no matter what you're wearing what you're running that's incredible and is long enough for any duel or any boss fight for our incantations we have golden vow and Flame Grant Me Strength is going to increase our attack and defense. Then Flame Grant Me Strength is, of course, going to give me extra damage. And then our baseline AR with that is 810, which is very solid for a shield. Obviously, our incantation used primarily for PvP, but a little bit in PvE is the Swarm of Flies for a bit of bleed buildup. Lastly, a quick look at our stats. We have 16 mine to get us to a nice 100 FP. We have not leveled endurance at all, amazingly. 48 strengths required for the shield. We've got 50 arcane to increase the bleed buildup on our attacks and for our various arcane things. 25 faith for our two incantations. Then as much health as we can possibly get, as close to 60 as we can get, I'm up to 57 there. So, in conclusion, we have something that's more than just viable, but ridiculously strong for a shield main build in Elden Ring. It's crazy that it's lasted this long as something so strong. While I continue to see the occasional Rivers of Blood and more so Seppuku users, I rarely see the fingerprint shield, despite how strong this really is. I've never had multiple people quit out on me after just taking a look at my build like today. So it goes to show that people really do fear it. The Madness proc is not what it once was, since now you can only really get one hit in after it happens but it's still more than enough and say someone foolish enough to try to trade with a full shield crash it's just over on the pve side of things it's just as i expected busted against enemies who can bleed which is yes most of them if you can time say multiple shield crash combos into one boss or one target that's going to be a massive chunk of health that it loses and then your ar will skyrocket However, I was really happy to actually mess around a bit with some guard points today in both PvE and PvP. The animation speed being slightly better is nice. People don't seem to expect it. Either way, this is a very strong shield and very strong build. Clearly recognized as such by the player base still, and it's been a while since I've been able to use something so meta in a video. Let me know what you think, and if you have a build you'd like to see me try, then let me know in the comments. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye